Hey, everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today's February 19th, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. Check out our low-pressure system right off Vancouver Island and the Washington coast, spreading precipitation back across the region. It's got a bit of a kick with it, too, as well. We've got some blustery conditions along the coast and northwest interior. You don't need me to tell you it's blowing out there fairly well straight at Georgia. And then we've got additional systems as we roll through the day Friday and then on through this weekend. Atmospheric River is going to set up across Pacific Northwest, bringing high snow levels and some increased precipitation amounts, some pretty excessive amounts in 24-hour period showing up here. We're going to dive into those details and take a look at the extended forecast as we go through the video here this morning. Now, looking at the last 365 days, we have gained about 34,000 subscribers. So again, much thanks to everybody supporting the channel. This channel is not possible without everyone that watches on a daily basis. Now, look at Yakima. There's Wenatchee and Omak. You've got some light snow out there. Some freezing rain showing up for Pendleton, 32 degrees. And you can check on Baker a Municipal Airport there, 33 and light snow. Some light snow moving into portions of Idaho as well. It's all rain, though, west of the Cascades. And we're dealing with some 50s even. Look at Salem. I'm checking in at 52 degrees, but it's quite windy on the coastline. It's going to get gusting up towards 45 miles per hour for Quileute. And if we zoomed in, I bet it's probably pretty windy here across some portion of the San Juan. Yeah, you can see it gusting up maybe 40, 45 miles per hour locally for some areas. There's some gale warnings out there. Check out Whidbey Island, 42 knots. I believe that's showing up on the last. So that's starting to get towards the upper 40s there. So probably some 50 mile per hour gusts, no doubt, not far away. But we take a look uh, east of the mountains as well. I want to kind of show you this. This is freezing rain, probably wrapping up as we go towards the noon hour. But we do have some snowfall potential, especially I-90 northbound. Maybe Spokane picking up another inch of snow. And any of that uh, freezing rain should be on the lighter side, maybe a tenth of an inch of ice accretion. And uh, then you can see the timing for some of the other things going on here as well. If you want to pause that or check it out, the Pendleton National Weather Service page, go ahead and do that. Uh, Spokane, look at Wenatchee, Chelan, three to four. Four, Winthrop, Omac, Republic picking up some additional snow. One to two on Highway 2 for Wilbur. And again, you can kind of see the cutoff there right on the I-90 boundary there. And if you go out across Lookout Pass, Idaho-Montana border, three to four additional inches. So careful if you're traveling back and forth. Look at Stevens Pass, eight to 12 inches. And this wraps up on 4 a.m. on Thursday for those snow totals. And just a heads up, if you are traveling east of the Rocky Mountains or if you're out across Montana, you don't need me to tell you just how cold it is out there. But there are some extreme cold warnings out there, some additional snowfall amounts. There's even a blizzard warning up there. Take a look at that just off to the west of Cut Bank, Montana. And you can see that extreme cold warning just kind of taken over the plains there all the way down into Texas. Now, if you want to help support the channel and you want your own a nice, uh, affordable home weather station, great smartphone app, ultrasonic anemometer, you know, click on that link down below to save 10% off. Highly recommended. Now, this is what's going on over the next 60 hours. You see a little bit of that pink mixing in. That's that freezing rain showing up. Shouldn't be too crazy out there. Another round of snowfall there moves across the Idaho Panhandle, Western Montana, some of the higher terrain also. And then we get a little bit of a break as we go on in through tonight into Thursday. Some light precipitation still occurring maybe across Southwest BC. The next system starts to arrive on the day Friday, and you can clearly see that here swooping across the area. But the big uh, atmospheric river starts to roll through this week. Weekend. I'll show you more on that here in a moment. Quickly here on the accumulated freezing rain. Still could be trapped in some of the higher terrain as well and some of the, you know, the interior valleys there also. But again, should not be amounting to much. Now, take a look at the European. If you remember, the European was showing a much stronger system further south. A little bit of a swing, of a, a swing and a miss there from the European. But you can see still a decent pressure gradient across the Washington coast with that system there. It's kind of, kind of interesting at 84 hours, the North American model had a better position of the slow versus the European. The European trended towards the North American model. So a little bit of a swing and a miss by the King European there. Now taking a look at 10 meter wind gusts. So as we go through this morning, this is as we're speaking right now. Again, fairly blustery and gusty. That's more than blustery. You're getting some gust up over 50 here on the latest high resolution rapid refresh. 54 for Quileute, some 50s potentially for the Washington coast down towards Astoria also. So heads up for that. Maybe some 30s for the Puget Sound here, 40 for Olympia. So it might get your attention there, but this is not a 
big region-wide windstorm. Now, wider view of things here. North Pacific Ocean. There's the Hawaiian Islands in the center. Far to the left, you got Japan. There's the Pacific Northwest to the right. There goes our frontal system we are dealing with now. A little bit of a break there before the next system rolls in on Friday. See that deeper low moving up towards Haida Gwaii. And look at the atmospheric river get aligned for the Pacific Northwest. That moisture plume stretching all the way back towards the Philippines. I had a viewer call it the Adobo Express there. So you can go ahead and nickname these atmospheric rivers, whatever you feel like. And then you can see that one's going to be with us here as we go on in towards Monday. Then we get this system here that looks like it may want to track towards Pacific Northwest. We'll watch that for wind potential over the next few days as well. So day four, excessive rainfall outlook. Finally getting in the act here. We got Saturday morning through Sunday morning and then day five, the same thing there as well. So we're looking for upgrades here over the next couple of days because the snow levels are really going to go quite high with this atmospheric river moving in uh, as far as it looks right now. So we'll just continue to watch that, but I'll show you some of the totals here starting right now. This is last night's GFS run. Put this into motion. We're looking at 24-hour precipitation running totals. In fact, let me back that all the way up and you can kind of see, you know, a half an inch, some pretty decent amounts across Vancouver Islands to the Olympics, Cascades, kind of setting the stage here for the next atmospheric river. Hopefully enough of that falls a snowfall that it, it won't be too much of a concern. Well, actually, there's kind of a double-edged sword to that. If you got the snowpack up there, some of that's going to get deteriorated with this next atmospheric river. But then look at some of these totals showing up on the GFS by the time you get towards Sunday night into Monday morning. I mean, two inches of rainfall at Seattle is really an excessive amount in a 24-hour period. So, yeah, we really got to watch this system coming up. And like I mentioned, the slovas are going to be quite high, so we're definitely going to have some flooding concerns. We will revisit this all again tomorrow. But first, I want to show you the European 24-hour running total. This is the ensemble mean, the average of all 50 ensemble members. And you can see pretty hefty amounts showing up there as well. And again, very high snow levels with this atmospheric river. Now, looking at Seattle Tacoma, you can kind of see still some discrepancy in the ensemble members on just how much precipitation is going to fall, but the mean is just above an inch there in a 24 hour period. Hoquiam, you're getting closer to inch and a half, two inches there in the mean on the European. Mount Baker ski area, look at that, up towards two inches as well. And pretty good agreement for a very rainy period. I'm going to show you some of the snow levels here starting right now because look at that. This is at Mount Baker, 4,200 feet. You can clearly see this warm air intruding into the Cascades, even the north. North Cascades there. So this is likely going to be falling as rainfall for Mount Baker. Not a good look there. And that's when the flooding potential is going to be worse as we head on in towards Sunday afternoon. Here's Paradise Mount Rainier. Look at some of these amounts. I mean, the control showing up towards three inches in a 24 hour period. And you can see that it's going to be quite warm during that time as we go into Thursday night, all the way on in through Sunday night. It's going to be, you know, the atmospheric river is going to warm things up and probably eat away at some of the snowpack. Look at Crystal Mountain there as well. I mean, my goodness, there's 10,000 feet and there's, you know, Crystal Mountain down here at 4,500 feet. So, uh, yeah, lots of warm air with this atmospheric river rushing in. Here's Silverton, Washington. Look at the control up over three inches. This is in the North Cascades as well. Big time rain incoming. Snoqualmie Pass is going to spend a lot of time in the rainfall this weekend as well. And here we go with Swift Creek. Again, big amounts there uh, across, I believe this is actually the North Cascades there. I, I believe I meant, I was, thought I was talking about uh, Silverton is actually Swift Creek. This is the North Cascades. Um, but yeah, big time amounts. Look at the control run up towards four inches and Swift Creek. Look at that. 10,000 feet against the top of this image. And Swift Creek is at 4,400 feet. Lots of warm air rushing in here. And this is the top down look at an atmospheric river. We measure these atmospheric rivers based on their integrated vapor transport and duration. It can be quite on the narrow side, but you see the cross section. These are not that high up in the atmosphere, 3,500 meters or so. And yeah, a very warm, humid air slams into our mountain ranges and you get the dramatic uh, rain shadow effect on the leeward side of our mountain ranges. Now, snow depth in inches. I want to show you something interesting here because you can kind of see this is actual snow depth according to the European. I want you to watch the Central Cascades for this example. You can see 103, 104, 105. And then as we go on in towards you know the end of the week, you're not really building up too much as you can see. Some of these systems bringing in the warmer air. And then as we go through Sunday, look at the decline in the snowpack there. We actually have a net loss of some snow there. If you go from when the run started to when it ends there, you can kind of see some areas pick 
picking up a little bit there, but some areas definitely losing some of the snowpack in some of the lower elevations there. So not a good look here for the snowpack across Washington State or even Oregon for that matter, British Columbia. I know this is not a big favorable snowfall machine, no doubt. The atmospheric River has got some warmth to it. Now, looking at the European uh, this is the weekly ensemble mean. And just a reminder, this did a really nice job on predicting in advance that February was going to be below normal here across Pacific Northwest and we would have that Western Canada troughing. So let's see what it says as we go on in through the next few days. Again, the Gulf of Alaska trough will be rolling here as we go through the next week or so. And then we start to head off into early March and you can see it starts to kick the ridge back out towards the Aleutian Islands and then the Western Canada troughing starts to return there as well. So is it on to something? here it may be but at, once we start getting into march you really start to limit your chances for lower elevation snowfall so it's not out of the realm of possibility but it's not something you would look at this setup and just say hey this looks really favorable for seattle or portland or for vancouver bc to get lower elevation snowfall we're kind of looking just at a cooler than normal pattern with some troughing here across western uh, canada and maybe down to the pacific northwest so that's what you take from these extended forecasts so six to ten day temperature outlook warm here for the West or at least above average. No, I wouldn't call it warm here for some of these local areas. We're still technically in winter, but six to 10 day precipitation, kind of a mixed bag here as well as we go through the end of the month, eight to 14 day. And then look at they've introduced this below normal, kind of showing that pattern change here as we go into the early portion of March. We'll see how that goes. We'll be breaking it down day by day. And of course, we're not doing too hot for Washington State and some of British Columbia with the snowpack and then this atmospheric river and all this precipitation we're getting is really not going to be helping that much. But we'll We'll check back and see what it says when all this atmospheric river action is said and done as we go on into next week. Oregon doing much better, but Idaho and Montana kind of below normal there as well. And uh, with this atmospheric river rolling in, we're no doubt going to have different, you know, snow layers getting thrown down on the Cascades there as well. Some of the Cascade concrete will definitely be apparent and just check before you go you can zoom in on these areas and click on these individual areas it gives you all kinds of good information and the drought monitor will be updating tomorrow we'll check that out here's a percent of average precipitation for the last 90 days and we are coming up on the end of meteorological winter once february wraps up we are off into meteorological spring so then we'll be able to look back and see what this la nina winter officially brought us but you can see we've been running a pretty good deficit here cascades west western washington western oregon up into b see for some areas as well. Um, again, there's some above average amounts here, but it doesn't take as much to skew these numbers because you don't get as much precipitation east of the Cascades compared to the Cascades and west. And average to, uh, temperature departure from average for a La Nina year, this is, you know, kind of a mixed bag. You can kind of see some areas slightly below, some areas slightly above, and we'll see what it looks like when all is said and done. Um, but yeah, anyway, a lot of rainfall incoming here, folks. We'll watch that flooding concern. We'll go over all this in more detail here tomorrow. Hope you guys are having a good day. Otherwise, click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again then, and I will talk to you guys later.